Hi, I'm Jacques Pépin. And I'm Claudine Pépin. You know, Titine, what I like the most about Christmas? <laughs> Let me guess, the food? The food, yes, but also our tradition. You know, the way we always buy a live tree and then we bury it after Christmas. And we have plenty beautiful tree over there with your age on each of them <laughs> you know, from 20 on. And another fine Pépin tradition is also how grumpy you get when you see the masses of Christmas presents under the tree. Yeah. <laughs> so what's on the menu? Well, we're starting with oyster on the half shell. Served with a tangy mignonette. That's one of my favorite memories of Christmas at home. And a perfect counterpoint to silky smoked salmon served with cucumber salad. A classic baked terrine of foie gras and my terrific simple soul cure foie gras served with roasted nut, crunchy sea salt and sweet preserves. Braised duck with tangy honey sauce, glazed shallots, and honey sweet potatoes is a perfect and wonderful main course. Black truffle salad with lemon dressing is rich and elegant. But for dessert, it's back to the classics. A spectacular bûche de Noël, a chocolate yule log with splendid decoration. But what about Christmas pudding with raisins, nuts, candied fruit, and old-fashioned hard sauce? Join us for one hour special Christmas feast next on Jacques Pépin's Christmas Celebration. When you have holiday and we have a lot of guests coming and you do a fantastic dinner or lunch or whatever, it's to plan ahead. And to plan ahead is what we've done here. We're going to celebrate Christmas and one of the first things I like to do for Christmas is the classic English Christmas pudding. So we have flour, we have eggs, we have a little bit of beef suet, which is classic. All of that in the food processor, get it like in powder, an addition of an enormous amount of different type of dry fruit from pear to to dry peach, dry apple, and apricot, resins, and so forth, and of course some whiskey. What do you have there? I have a dime, and you put a dime in here, and the person who gets a dime gets a whisk when okay. it's cooked in okay. like 8, 10, 12 months. Wow. <laughs> yeah, because that really can be done way ahead, huh? Like six months ahead. It doesn't have to be six months no, ahead. No, but it can but, be. But it can be done, yes, way ahead. We put it in there, and classically, I mean, what I do, I cover it with uh, plastic wrap, you know, pack it tightly there. And then aluminum foil around there. Traditionally, you have a bowl like this. Yes. And then you wrap it, just cheesecloth. And then this has a lip. Yeah. So what you can do is put the string around. So and then also... You can lower it. Yep, you can lower it and you make a little thing on top. So what I have is water here. We have here. tongs now. Yeah. <laughs> I have a towel in the bottom so it doesn't uh, tepid water from the tap. We cover it and that has to steam for a good five hours. When you're ready to use it, you have to re-steam it an hour, get it warm, and a bit of syrup on top and the hot sauce. So this has to cook for a while. That, like a very long time. So we're moving to our second dessert, which is more classically French. This one, we're doing the bûche de Noël, that is the Christmas Yule. And uh, the Christmas Yule was done because the, 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 the story was that you had to burn a big log in the, in the, in the fireplace during the Middle Ages in France. It has to burn the whole night without, without stopping. If it stopped, it was bad luck for the year. If it didn't stop, however, you took the ashes, and the ashes were supposed to, to cure, you know, headache, to cure everything. You sprinkled them there, it was good luck or whatever. So that's the story this of the, the Bouche de Noël. I didn't know. Oh, you didn't know that? No. I just eat Aren't it. I just eat it and it's good. So I'm going to beat the egg white for you and what you're going to yolks. mix the egg yolk, I sugar. Have sugar. And I have a little bit of vanilla and I'm going to start mixing that. Good idea. So here what you do, you want to go very fast to start with, to break the white so that they don't go like a wet mop around your wick. And then you start slowly lifting it up. 
can see that I barely touch the ball. This is hard work. Now do I, I know. Do and I I'm put drugging. the flour in here yet? You have to put your flour, yes. Okay. Put the whole thing in it and stir it gently. And my egg whites are not ready, but... Almost. Almost. So it goes pretty fast. You don't want any lump here, Claudine. No, I know. So change hand when you're... Well, this hand... No, I can't. No. <laughs> That's it. That's good. That's fine. Nice and smooth, right? I'm tightening the whiteness. I think you should have been a drummer. <laughs> no, but you see, that's it. That's what they all do. So, you want me to put that in there? Okay. Tastes good. And I keep this because we're going to fold it with that. Okay. One second. So very coarsely. I don't want to break down my white too much, so mix okay. it this. coarsely and then start folding it. That's good. All right. And you can see this. here that I move my bowl. And I don't move my hand so that the whole thing is nice and light. I want to show you how to line up a mold like this. I mean, uh, I have a piece of paper here. What Just you do? regular parchment? Parchment, you butter half of it. Then you fold the other oh, one. This I know. And it's buttered on each side. And what you do, you cut the corner here, this way, and this way. We open it. Everything is better. So that when you fold it like this, at the corner, those two things cross like that. You see the way they like cross? This. You see the way they cross? Well, since you're so good at this, are you going to be wrapping all the Christmas presents too? Uh huh. <laughs> okay, so that's the proper way of doing it. That in there. Yeah. See, this is a biscuit roulé, you know, a rolled. And that again, you can do a day or so ahead, you know. When it's cold, just cover it with plastic wrap, and you want to keep it refrigerated, of course, until you're ready to roll it. Okay. All the rest of it. And that's it? That's it. And I'm going to put this in the oven. In the middle, right about? In the middle. Good. I have one which is ready here, as you can see, mm. done on this. Are we you... taking the whole thing out? Yeah, might as well. That's it. Nice and done. And then, of course, there is about 10 different types of uh, cream you can do in it. In fact, when I was a kid, my mother put jam in it. That, I love that, just so raspberry jam. jam. Mm -hmm. Yes, raspberry jam. But uh, I have a chocolate cream here. That's not bad. That's not bad. <laughs> So the chocolate cream, what I have here is a creme pâtissière, so-called creme pâtissière that is a pastry cream, which is flour, egg yolk, a bit of uh, vanilla, flour, egg yolk, vanilla, and then uh, milk. You boil the whole thing together, it gets thick, you have a pastry cream, and then you just put the chocolate in it, it melts in there, you can flavor it with something else. So this one is a little, actually, it's a little stiff. Good, you have to do it ahead. Now, very often in store, they do it with a buttercream, which mm. is, of course, much richer than that. Yeah. It's not only the question of richness, it's a question that the buttercream will hold better than that. So for people who do it for several days, you know, when they do the bake shop, I have to taste this. this is a bit easier, you know, than this. I like this because it doesn't have alcohol in it. And you know how I feel, I don't... I like alcohol in my desserts. You don't like alcohol in your dessert? No, I like it on the side, in a glass. <laughs> and then now you, you can use the paper, you know, 
the rolling. Mm. To roll it like this. You see. And that also, you can even have it ready. You know, a couple of days ahead, you will rewrap that in there. Then you can put that in your refrigerator, that's ready. If you, do you, you want, want me to get the, the tray? tray? Yeah. In our case, of course, we want to use it mm. right away, so... I mean, and we want it... Um, Seam side down. Yeah, approximately. Oh, it's so nice and moist. That's it. You can even twist it a little bit. Remember, it's a log, a tree log, so maybe we have it this way, right? Close in. Perfect. So now we do another cream on top. You could have the same cream on top, but I wanted to do... So I have melted chocolate here and cream, and we do what we call a ganache souffle, that is a whipped ganache and a little bit of rum in there. Well, a tablespoon of rum. That's good. And this, I want to work this out mm. into a kind of a buttercream, you know, if you want. Just whip it. it whipped. You don't want to whip it too much because you don't want to get it too fluffy. What do you mean too fluffy? If you put too much air in it, it gets very fluffy, and you know what happened? It gets hard, and I can't spread it out. Oh. But they are just holding like that. That's a whipped ganache. Mm. Yeah? You want to taste it? <laughs> yeah. So we have our ganache on top. So, what you want to do is to use the size of your uh, thing to um, up. We're going to clean up. We can put decorations on top if we mess up the... Yes. That's it. I want to put some on this side. You want it thick enough because we're going to mark it with a, a tin to do the, the bark of the tree. But the first thing that we do, we cut the side up a little bit on a bias like this to do the stump of one tree, you know, here. And uh, cut the other side too. A messy business, huh? No, but it's fun. It is the, the other stump. Okay. Never Christmas without this. So that's why, you know, need the rubber spatula. I need a bit more of this, right? Okay. But here, but what you what you want? You want this also? Remember, outside. So now it does look like the stump of a tree. So you know that's good because you use everything. The trimming at the end, that's good. A okay, right here. Wait, wait a minute, now the fun part of it, you're gonna do that. You do the bark of a tree here, like this, just lightly, you know? That's right, you wanna push too much into it? <laughs> do this, yeah? Yeah, now it's starting to look like a, a log, yeah? Mm-hmm. And even... Oh, that's maybe. nice. And now it's okay. perfectly fine this way. This would be the classic way. You put a lot of... Uh, you can put some holly around or stuff. But then if you want to no. do another more, com more complicated or... I think you can do what I did here which is taking a little piece of plastic wrap, a little piece of uh, parchment, uh, uh, paper. parchment paper, rather, like this, and you have some melted chocolate, you spread it on top. Just melted chocolate with nothing? No, with nothing. Okay. And then on top of that, we put some... Uh, mint. Mint, because there is... Mint goes well with chocolate. See that fit? And that's the bark of our uh, thing, you know, we can... Break it, it should stick to that, you know, a little bit. Okay. Well, well, when it's a little bit warmer. 
Oh, this I, I is am. so beautiful. I think this one is even a bit big. Maybe I'll cut some. Doesn't matter that it's box, so you yeah, know if it's, it's you cut it. You can already remelt it, you know. Do whatever you want with it. You will notice that as it uh, warm up a little bit in your dining room, we'll have a tendency to soften, you know, fall a little bit on mm. top. Well, we have some decoration, maybe a little bit of snow, right? So we can go skiing. Okay. And then you have some decoration that you prepare there. Mm-hmm. Little berries and leaves and just anything you have around. Yes. Mm. Okay, a couple of the berries there. Maybe, Claudine, what do you think? Here, mm. there. A couple of berries here and there. Holly or... The berries are not for eating, they're just for decoration. Okay, I think we have a, a splendid bûche de Noël. Don't you think so? Well, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. I got some good dirt in it. That's it? Every year after Christmas, my dear old friend Claude helped me plant our living Christmas tree behind the house. Some water on top of it. All right. Oh, oh perfect. Okay. Oh, good. We try. Straight. It looks good. Yeah. No, that's not straight. What do you mean it's not straight? straight. You can't see. Oh, well, I understand oh, that. Gee, I'm tired. Would you continually tell me? You wanted to see the bottom of the thing. Okay. Water there. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm planning to do. What do you mean that's it? No, because we gotta put water now. Huh? Hey, yeah. Oh my gosh. That's a beautiful little tree, isn't it? I think so, yeah. It's gonna get real big. Oh, yeah. Thanks for helping. <laughs> Anytime. Okay. <laughs> the goose liver pate. And the goose liver pate, there is several ones which come. There is some coming from France, there is some coming Sonoma. Uh, in California, some from Canada, and the Hudson River Valley uh, Foie Gras. Mm. I personally think the Hudson River Valley Foie Gras, which is this one, is yeah. the best by far. So uh, this is what we have here, and this is Moulard, Moulard duck, and those are about a pound, almost a pound and a half liver. Now, as you can see, they come cryo back this way, but I put it into lukewarm water. It wasn't and, frozen, though. Oh, no, it's never frozen. No. no, but it come cryo back so that I can separate the two lob like this. And I'm going to do this one is going to be cooked. So I'm opening it. As you can see, you can see the, the central nerve here. Yeah. So you try to clean the inside. Jesus what do you look for in a in a foie gras that's raw? Uh, I would say that there is different grade that you can buy it. If you have to splurge for that because it's relatively expensive. Go for grade A, which is the best, mm -hmm. uh, because the other one, especially if you saute it, you know, a lot of it may melt. It's something which is always difficult. You don't know how much of it you're going to lose on that. So this, we want to clean it up as much as we can. That again, you do ahead, you know, mm -hmm. and then we will season it. I I'm going to show you two ways of doing the foie gras. So this one we're going to cook. So. Uh, I'm going to season that and have a mixture here of uh, white pepper, then the salt, quite a lot of salt you need in there. And I put a little bit of gelatin in there. We mix that together and this is going to be, I have gelatin, uh, yeah, about close to one envelope of, uh, of just plain wax gelatin, you know. And here, some cognac, you want to spread about a good tablespoon, two tablespoons of cognac on top of this, Claudine. Here, I had it all ready for you. That's good. And there is different way of cooking it. Sometimes au torchon, you know, you see in restaurants au torchon, a torchon means a towel. It's cooked in a towel. Mm. All the time here, what we're cooking it, just in the terrine like this. So we try to put, you know, a nice piece underneath, you know. The smaller piece which are broken, 
in the center, you know, and the last and piece on top. You're just kind of pressing it down? Well, you want me have to press it so that nice and tight. That goes into the oven, it depends how you pack it and uh, your container if it's more flat or thicker and so forth, but it takes a good hour, hour and a quarter maybe, uh, at like 225 degree low temperature. We want to cook that to about 120, 125 degree internal temperature. And it goes in there with, with tep water. tepid water. You gonna put it in the oven for me, Claudia? Yeah. Okay. And then I have another foie gras, which is done by curing with salt. Just cook with the salt itself. For this one, I need more white pepper. Uh, I need the cognac. But there's no gelatin in this, so. No, 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 no gelatin, it's not cooked. And sometimes some people put a dash of sugar, which is fine too. Okay, so put the plastic there. Okay. Thank you. This? No, I want it. No. All you did to this was clean it. Clean it. And leave it in the refrigerator? You clean it and then you you roll it. And I'm gonna show you it. Tight. As tight actually as you can. Yeah. So here try to get it. already slightly tight here. But you know what? Okay. Wow. Tight as you can. Okay. And that has to cure at least 24 hours, 48 hours or so. Okay. Now here is the first one that we did here. I already cleaned it up. I want to show you the way it was cooked with you. After it's cooked, I put a piece of uh, cardboard like this. Uh-huh. Uh, with a piece of... Uh, Just aluminum foil? Yes, on top. And put it on top. Well, this is still in. Put it on top of the foie gras and I put a weight like two pound a uh, can of uh, something that I put on top oh. that press out some of the fat. And that's what I have here, all of the fat which came out. So now that this, comes, it bubbles from the top? Well, yeah, because it melts as it cooks, so you oh, press it a little okay. bit. And then uh, this you keep to saute potato or doing yes, things like I that. See, I see, really I knew. I yeah. knew I have something. All right. And this, in top of this here, we have an aspic now, a meat aspic, which is a stock which has been clarified. We clarify the stock with a clarification, egg white and all that. That's classic to serve that with it. Uh, flavored with port wine or cognac and so forth. I have hot water here. Start cutting. Why? Because it doesn't stick to my knife like this. Mm. You see your foie gras, it's beautiful color. Mm -hmm. See the Japanese do that with big knife and they do this. So the water run on top of that when they cut the sushi, you know? Oh. So we so want... Gonna, oh. It's classic to serve a sweet wine with this. I mean, I'm very generous with my portion here. With that foie gras, we could do easy 12 people, you know? What we can do also in this, the aspic, I cut a little more aspic that I have in there, and you can cut your aspic this way. You have to give me a spoon for that. I'm cutting it across. And then we have, mm. you know, the little... Just little dices. Aspic dice of aspic around, which is like little... Uh, Jewel, you know. Mm -hmm. This is the stuff that you add since you were a kid, you know, for yes. the holiday. But yeah. uh, this is. I really didn't used to like it though. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't like it at first. Now I do. 
Okay, that's But I only nice. like yours anyway. And I have a beautiful truffle here, which is a tuberum melanosporum, which is the real truffle of uh, of the, the 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 part of France, which is the southwest of France. Mm -hmm. And we cut some of this. You know, we put them around. We are decadent today. Okay, I think that would be great. I think this and is beautiful. That, Let me get the other one. A nice little uh, slice of boyoche and you really have something. Okay. Do you think people would be nervous about ha knowing that that's raw? This is, this is cured this way. I mean, you know, uh, today we, we, we had uh, fish which is raw. Certainly sushi, sashimi, uh, an enormous amount. And even in the style of Nouvelle Cuisine, when you do a salmon rare, you know, you do it so that it's about, it's usually about 90 degree internal temperature in a restaurant when it's red. So basically we eat a lot of things raw now. Mm. You see this one, beautiful Buddha. It really is gorgeous. And again, you know what I'm doing here? I am wetting my knife, so. You would want to do this. And as you said, you can see one, two, three, four, five, eight, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen people, yes. Mm -hmm. So with this, it would be slightly different. And uh, I love to put nuts on that, and those are roasted nuts. You know? They're hazelnuts, right? They're hazelnuts, but I mean, I roast them. Something sweet. You know, whether it's a chateau, a sauterne, a sweet wine, you know, goes well with... Uh, oh, yeah. With... Uh, caviar. So in the same way here, we are putting... In fact, you know, usually... What I do, I put a, a bit of those underneath. Underneath. To put it on top. I think the first time I had it with nuts like that was with Claude. I think it was at Postrio in, oh, really? in San Francisco. Yes, great cook there. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we put a little bit of uh, what that uh, fig fig, fig yeah? jam fig jam here. Mm. Then you have some. Now to add to this, we put fleur de sel, flower of salt, which is a salt from Brittany, a grey salt from the sea, which is crunchy a little bit. So I like few drop of that on top, even a few drop of cracked paper, you know, on top. And some toast. Some nice little toast around, you know, two or three. That's it. And this is food fit for the god. Here at the fresh foie gras with cognac aspic and the salt cured foie gras. One of your favorite thing is duck, right? Absolutely, I love duck. And one of your favorite recipe, the one that I'm going to do. Skillet duck. Skillet duck that I've done for you, but we're doing it with sweet potato, glazed shallots, mm. and with a honey sauce. Oh, you know? sounds wonderful. We have the skin from the neck here, and we're going to cut this into pieces and use it to saute the duck. The duck is only cut into four pieces. Four. You know? So, I cut that in half, mm. and after... I cut the other piece in half, you, right? You want? Okay. But you know, you, know, you know where you cut it. Lift yeah. it up like that. No, no, go more in that direction. You want? Put it straight down. That's, that's it. right. That's um. it. Okay, that goes into the stock. That goes into the stock. If we put it in there, and that we leave it in this big piece like this. We're going to put this in there? Yeah. Okay. That goes into the stock. And this, the extra skin here, I want you to cut it into pieces again to add to this. We're going to do a bit of a braised duck. And by this I mean we're going to cook the duck in the south of France, what we call confit. It's cooked with the fat of the duck. Mm -hmm. The end of this. So, 
I have four pieces of duck here. The four pieces of duck, the two breasts, the two legs with the bone underneath, mm -hmm. and then those two extra little pieces. That's Very what good. we are going to brown, not only brown, brown and braise. So that goes in there too. Duck fat is one of the best to Thing. saute potato in the whole and world. To do. And in the south of France, southwest of France rather, that's where they did that study of the French paradox. It's where people live the longest in France. They don't really use that much olive oil. All they use is butter. They use poultry fat, goose, duck fat, and so forth. So, put it on top of this. This will brown in there. It will brown only on the skin side. So now the duck is cooking. And as I say, 16, 18 minutes on one side, on the side, you know, yeah. this, we never turn the duck. Even after it's brown, we're gonna cover it and cook it like this. By covering up, it's going to create steam. So now, and on very low heat, so it's going to steam and cook. So with that, we are doing sweet, sweet potato. potatoes and yams. Yeah, sweet potato and yam. And here, you see you have, this we are peeled. I know you don't like yours peeled. No, not really. But this I like the peeled. skin. It's not a lazy thing. I just like the skin. Right. So you can cut your sweet potato in slice as we've done here. Uh -huh. Or then your sweet potato into slice like this. So yams two, two types of sweet potato. We call them yam sweet potato. They're What's actually the two types of sweet potato. One is orange and the other one is there. We put that under cold water, bring it to a boil and boil it for like four or five minutes. I mean, this is still hard, but it's halfway cooked. So now we're gonna start browning it. I put a little piece of butter in there. Put in, you can arrange them in this. Okay, I got it. Yeah. And uh, what we are going to do there is to arrange them in slice, a couple of it. That you want to brown them very nicely, salt, pepper. You put salt, pepper, yeah. in. Okay, good, thank you. A beautiful honey there. Mm. Now you're gonna put this the honey in to cook? Yeah, I think you can let honey in there. <laughs> we can can lower that. Well that's good like that. Okay. And next the shallot. I have some shallot with water here. Mm -hmm. So here is what we do here. You can peel one. So is this gonna be instead of the pearl onions? Uh, yes, it's I mean, a little... traditionally, you know, Christmas. Well, we do the shallot. Yeah, glazed shallot like that is very good. I like shallots one. much better than pearl onions, yeah? I have to say. They're also a lot easier to peel. I like both. Doesn't... You think so? Yeah. Easier to peel? Yep. So this goes into a little bit of water. The idea here is to boil it at high temperature. I'll put some salt in there. You want to put a little bit of butter in there, Claudine. Is that enough? Uh, yeah. And then sugar. That did not sound convincing. No, that, that, yeah, that's fine too. It's Christmas. And what will happen here, we boil it for a few minutes until it starts getting slightly tender. Mm -hmm. Then you remove the lid. And then? Whatever liquid is left, you boil it on high heat without the lid. It disappears. You're going to be left with the butter and the sugar. And it's going to create a caramel and they are going to glaze in the caramel. You can do that with carrots, you can do that with other vegetables. Mm. What I'm going to start now is the sauce for the duck. Yeah, yeah. Sauce for the duck, we're going to do what we call a gastric, which is a caramel really, but with vinegar and sugar. It's very acidic. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Every time I vinegar. do glaze something with vinegar, I'm always way too close to the pan. Yeah, it's bad. Uh, it's bad, it's bad, yeah. yeah. So we're gonna boil this. And that will be added to the stock. What we have actually done with the bone, we brown the bone in a, in a saucepan like this. And then after they are nicely browned, a bit of carrot, onion, thyme, bay leaf, water. Boil it three, four hours. Strain it. You have about four cups of stock. And then reduce the stock to two cups 
cup and a half, two cups to have what we call a demi-glace here. You know, which is that mixture of stock. So demi-glace is, is nice reduced stock. It's a reduced stock, that's it. A reduced brown stock. And to that extent here, it doesn't even have any... Here, taste it. It doesn't even have any salt or anything in it, right? No, but I can still, I can really yeah, taste the carrots there is no salt. it's very intense. Okay, now, my... I want to show you this, you see? Oh, brown. yeah. And the, 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 the skin shrinks, you yeah. know, considerably. You're still going to leave it uncovered? We still leave it uncovered, but a little more, and then we cover it for 35 minutes. Now the glaze is there. Let's see whether we can turn this. It's starting browning. Mm -hmm. oh, we want to glaze them maybe a bit longer. Huh? Is it going to glaze more on the on the honey side, or are you going to put honey on the other side when you turn? The honey is inside now. I just put honey like that, so mm -hmm. it goes all over. Maybe I'll cover it. So you see that? And what about cook? the the um, the shallots? They're boiling. The shallots are boiling. So now the shallot, they're getting tender? A little bit, yeah, but I think okay. they probably need a little bit more time. Well, at that point, I'll remove that. Okay. And now we start boiling this. And let's see the gas flake here. It's not quite a caramel. We still have to wait a couple of minutes for that. Now look the outside here. It's turning into caramel, uh -huh. caramelizing. And that's basically what you want, you know? Wow. Then, uh, I didn't think it would turn brown. You see this here? There's well, almost done. no more liquid gun. Yeah. So we start reducing the stove that's going to start glazing also. So I'm reducing the heat a little bit. So I don't want it burned, but I want to turn them into, you know, that caramelization here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now this is much darker even, which is the way I want it. So we'll put the stock in it. Oh. That's a good smell. Good smell, huh? A little bit of honey. Even though I have sugar there, see we're doing a, a sweet sauce there. And then I have a little bit of starch here. If I want to thicken it lightly. Do you want some water? I can put water, wine. Vinegar? Oh, no, no, not vinegar now. Water. Your vinegar would be, uh, couldn't be good with the vinegar now. So there. What happened is that as soon as this touch, it thickened. I think the way you thicken things is not the way a lot of people think of as thickened. I mean, it's a really light thickening. Well, it's not like making gravy. You I know? just want it to be slightly oily. That's it. And then a dash of salt, because remember there is no salt in there. Yep. Stir Some it pepper. and taste it. Want a little bit of pepper? Yeah, you test it. Yeah, you see? Yeah, a little bit of paper. Okay. It's hot. It's hot. Now, so this is finished. The sauce is finished. Now, this is glazing, you see? Perfect. So it's going to glaze all of that all around. And this what about is the sweet potatoes? The sweet potato are also glazing, you know, much more beautiful layer on one side and then the other side with the honey, you see? Uh -huh. And, and now, at what point do you cover that? About now. Yeah. Let me see what it looks like. You see how oh. dark it is? The whole beautiful and dark like that. Mm -hmm. So now it's still on the skin. We're going to cover it. Okay. Lower the heat to very low. And you don't want to open it. That will create steam. Very low heat. And we put it about 45 minutes now. Okay, you can see now, Claudine, it's cooked. See? Yeah. It's pretty tender. Mm -hmm. It's braised. And if you do that ahead, what you want to do is to take the bone out, as I'm going to do it here, and the, the carcass like this. And that, theoretically, when I do that, I put that back into the stock, which is cooking for the, the sauce, you know? I mean, you can serve it with the bone, but it's a bit nicer. And you may say, why don't you take the bone at the beginning of 
Well, well, it, pr it protects the meat. The meat stays very moist and all that, protected and by the carcass. And also it gives better flavor, don't you think? Yeah, it gives better flavor too. You can even trim a bit of the fat. And then let's prepare a plate okay. for that. Here we go. We have a beautiful platter. Yeah, Claudine, this is clean. Put that on top here. All right. So this would be for two. We do a duck for four, you know? Mm. That little piece of wing there, which is really good. Around, you know, let's put four. That's more than enough. Okay, we glaze shallots in the middle. A large glaze shallot. You can do that, of course, individual plate, you know, it's fine. You put a bit of sauce on top. If you want, you want nappe, yeah? On the meat, like this, you know? Okay, you want to put a dash of parsley in the center for would color? You, would you like there to be a dash of parsley there? Okay. And here we have the braised duck with glazed shallot and honey sweet potato. Very often people reading cookbook or reading recipe get confused with words such as stock, you know, brown stock, white stock, demi-glace, which is half glaze, glace de viande, which is meat glaze, and it seems to be a big secret of the chef. And it is, in a sense, but it's much easier than people think. It's purely a question of common sense. Stock are a liquid that you do with bone and water. You have white stock, you have brown stock. And this is a good white stock. This is a proper brown stock. This is the right consistency for a demi-glace or half glaze. And this is a glace de viande, that is the pure extraction brought to the ultimate reduction. Now, when you do brown stock, you take your bone, you put them in the oven to brown them. I have veal bone here, but often I use a mixture of veal and chicken. A couple of hours, in the last 45 minutes or so, you put carrot and onion. The only two because it caramelizes. And after it's nicely caramelized, put that in a large stock pot, cover with water, again, no salt, a piece of celery if you want, sometimes a couple of tomato, and you cook it very gently to have that nice, gentle boil. Along the way, you skim, and very often you push with the bowl of your ladle like this, and then turning it around, you pick up the fat and the scum from it. And when that stock is cold and you take any fat left from it, it should have about that texture. This is the normal or the natural gelatin of the bone. Another part of this now is what we call demi-glace or half glaze. That is, you take that brown stock and you boil it down to concentrate the flavor into a smaller volume with more color and stronger intensity of taste. And the demi-glace reduced like this, just naturally, will add that slightly oily look. Now the ultimate reduction is to continue boiling this until it reach what we call a glace de viande. There is basically no more moisture in it. Now my cold glace de viande, I want to show you the texture that it has. It's like a piece of rubber, and still it's in the kitchen for a while, so it's pretty soft, but when it's really cold, it is almost as hard as rubber. I would cut it into cube like this, because as I said, it's extremely potent. And, you know, if I have that amount of glass de viande, I have enough for over a year at my house. Then from a little piece frozen like that, you throw into a sauce and you will intensify the flavor in an incredible way. Hi. You're working on the truffle. Peeling truffles. And Peeling I'm, truffles. Then I'm going to save the peels. Yes. Put a little cognac on top. You want me to put some cognac in there for you? Is that the good stuff? Or the yeah, that's the good stuff. <laughs> good. Remember the time you make your meatloaf and use my cognac? But I won a prize. <laughs> from 1916, she got the best prize for meatloaf. Use one, my cognac from 1916. Yeah, this is good. You know, we put that, uh, you can keep them basically forever in the refrigerator, in the cognac or Madeira or thing like that to add them to sauces or to add them to uh, pâté or stuff like this. This is very... Uh, rough, rough surface, 
and whiter inside. This is good though. And this like we have here, but this is a tuberum estivum. Mm -hmm. Estimum meaning uh, summer in Latin. So this is a summer truffle. And uh, it has less... It doesn't have the same aroma. No, less than the top, as I say, is really tough. So you keep it this way. This is a winter truffle. You know, the tuberum melanosporum, you know. And then this is not to be confused with the most expensive of all truffles, which is the white truffle, mostly from Piedmont in Italy, which is the tuberum magnatum, which cost uh, a small fortune, like three times the price of those. A little more cognac. Huh? A little more cognac. That's good. We, we just want them immersed completely, yep. right? Okay, what else are you doing? We're going to shave these truffles on top of the salad, so I'll oh, make sorry. a dressing. Okay, just put some lemon in there. Yeah. So, what else? You want salt, pepper? A little salt, a little pepper. I'm salt, just... pepper. And some walnut oil. Walnut oil you put in there. Walnut oil is quite nutty, you know, and that goes particularly well with the truffle. And then we have some sliced mushroom here. I put your mushroom in there. And we'll just toss it. Yeah, I don't think you need all of this, really. No, that's plenty. Huh? Yeah. yeah. That's good. Okay. This you would want, of course, to season at the last moment, because that's going to get wilted pretty fast. You have your tosser. My tosser. My hands are my tosser. But no, oh. I'll, I promise. I'll do a couple of spoons here. I'll give you a beautiful plate here. Oh, thank you. What a guy. Okay, and we can slice the truffle on top of it. This is a truffle slicer. Sometimes you, you slice your truffle directly like this on top of a... That's going to be a bonus. You're going to have little truffles on the bottom here. Yeah, if you want, yes. Get some red on here for Christmas. How's that? Is that enough? Uh, I think for one salad should be enough. Okay. You want to slice some truffle on it too? I'm always afraid I'm going to hurt my hand with this With thing. this? You want to use that? Yeah. You I'd, like that better, I'd rather, right? yeah. Okay. And then I can use... I can even use a knife. I can use the truffle. Are we being extravagant here? here we are. Okay, good. We are with extravagant for the holiday. All right, here. How's that? This is it. Beautiful. A beautiful black truffle salad. So I think we have a little bit of salmon with that, right? Mm -hmm. You want me to slice some for you? Yes. And we're going to this put is a it. beautiful smoked salmon. Now here. You know, when you slide your salmon, you really have to use a nice knife like this and cut very, very loosely, you know, to get thin, thin slice of salmon like this. And then you can present them, just pile up like this, you know, they look quite nice now. You have a salad here? Yeah, a little cucumber salad. I'll take it for you there. Okay. We have some eggs also that you can put underneath too. So again, I'll slice. A piece for you. No, really don't push on the knife. Let it slide. Gently. Yes. Is that okay like this? That's nice. Yeah, yeah okay. I did some asparagus. Oh, you can cook them and after you slice them like this, you cut them in fourth like this. Yeah. You like them? Like, I like them around the edge. Okay, I'll, I'll have to follow suit here. Oh, no, no, you can charge. do them the other side if you want. And then what else? A bit of cracked pepper? <laughs> Two is plenty. Huh? You want to put a dash of oil on top of this? Little, the walnut oil is going the to be walnut, too strong. No, this would be actually, I think, pretty you think good, so? but up yeah. to you. Okay. Just a little filler of oil. Like that? Uh huh. Even on the salmon, it's okay. A little piece of lemon skin, no? Just to have on top. It's beautiful. So here is our smoked salmon with a cucumber salad, of course, chopped eggs, asparagus, and so forth. I don't think that I have spent a Christmas without oyster and foie gras, you know? So we have a bunch of different oysters here. They're beautiful. You know, some of those? Well, it's like wine. I know I like them, but I'll never remember the name. Uh -huh. yeah. But we have Malpec. And those are from Maine now, the Boulogne, you know, that we used to do very iodine, you know, that we oh, do in France. It's Claudine's favorite, the, I think. Cumi, those tiny ones, you know? Yeah. I mean, there is so many different types of oyster now, you know? Mm -hmm. Let's see those Malpec here. Well, I'll get the plate ready so you can put them down and then we'll make the sauce. So we have some crushed ice. That's a good idea to have the, the towel and to have a, a soup plate in it. Yeah, that's great. Is that enough? Oh, that yeah, should be. Enough, yeah. yeah. 
Here you go. Because in the cross side, like, you can really put them in, they don't move, which is the beauty of it. When the ice starts melting, it goes right into the towel. It doesn't go all over the place, especially if you have a deep plate. While you're opening the oysters, you want me to you want to do, the do sauce, a little yes. mignonette? I have some red wine vinegar. Red wine vinegar. There's enough salt in the, um, in the brine, but quite a bit of pepper. And then we have some shallots, beautifully diced. And this is the red radish. Uh, icicle radish, they call yeah. it, or something like that. Mm -hmm. Put a little bit of that in there. You want a bit of the green inside? Well, since it's Christmas, I'll let you put some green. Go ahead. This is dill, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, that's good. And a teeny drop of oil. Not much. That's it. And you just put a dash of this, just a little dash of this on your oyster. And it's really good. So... Here is our oyster on the half shell with the mignonette sauce. We can leave it in there. Okay. Yes. Beautiful. Christmas dinner at our house is always an exceptional time and very close to my heart. Joyeux Noël! Joyeux Noël! Special celebrations at our house always begin with champagne. There is excitement in a bottle of champagne. The bubbles, the way it fills in your mouth, the way it marries with certain special food like caviar and oysters. The whole feeling of celebration is encapsulated in a bottle of champagne. We have some great oysters. We have the oyster from Fisher Island. We have the fragua with the roasted uh, uh, hazelnut and uh, a little a bit of honey and some cracked paper on top, so please help yourself. The whole family works as a team to prepare a meal that will celebrate this special day and the family and friends who are with us. Charlie's bread. Charlie's bread. Thank you, Charlie. Beautiful bread. You've been baking all day and all night. Gloria, I love your beautiful orange decoration on the table. This is really great. Well, you'll have, you'll have to ask Claudine, she did it. Oh, this is so pretty. Uh, a friend of mine taught me how to do this. I actually took cloves and put them in different lovely patterns um, oh. in the citrus. And what's nice is that it smells beautiful because you, you're piercing the skin, yes. so you're kind of getting mm -hmm. some of the essential mm -hmm. oil. The bay leaves are actually off from this beautiful wreath we got in California. The wreath is um, bay leaves and rosemary, and we pulled this off to do part of the table decoration. When I was a little boy in France during the war, our Christmases were quite meager. Gifts were scarce and functional, like a few pair of socks or a pyjama. But now we have such bounty. Our house is warm and filled with great food. I don't take anything for granted. I savor every single bit. But the food and wines are only part of the feast and the way to bring everyone close. I want to make a toast to thank Tonton Jacques and Tantine yeah. for inviting us for Same. Christmas. Thank you. thank you. It's great to have you all here. Wonderful. Thank you. We are thankful to be sharing this precious time at the table together. That is the best Christmas gift. One more. <laughs> I didn't oh, it didn't get you. Just like midnight. I'm just oh, yeah. Christmas. 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 I love family tradition, and it's uh, so nice to have you all with us. So I hope we'll do it again, Next many year. many years to come. <laughs> and thank you all for coming and happy cooking. Happy cooking. Right. Production of KQED San Francisco.